Welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurs in Fuego, Rachel Srinivasan. Um, I love art, uh, I have to admit. Art is in my blood and we document the journey of amazing entrepreneurs and also of amazing artists. And artists have just a special place in my heart. Rachel, how are you? I'm good. I, I do know that you like art because I have seen a few other interviews <laughs> that, with other artists and you really are really into it. You're really paying attention and you appreciate the creativity that goes I, into creating pieces. I love the fact uh, or the idea of how, how art is created, you know, the process. What is that you're thinking when you... Tell me about this piece right here. Can we get it there, David? Let me put it right here. So this piece was created for um, a show called Inglorious Arizona that was a collaboration between um, Arizona Republic and ArtLink. Mm -hmm. And all of the artists were assigned a story of a real inglorious um, character in Arizona's past. So this is Rutherford Nephew, and his, his nickname is Climax Jim because he loved Climax chewing tobacco so much. He chewed at least uh, 12 pounds of it on one of his cowboy rides. He loved to Climax? No. <laughs> Chewing tobacco? He loved Climax chewing tobacco, oh. which is here. Oh, oh okay. A, All right. Uh, listen, you know, I... It's a real tobacco brand. Oh, it is? Okay. <laughs> it's a real... Right. You know, hey, look, at, I just, I, I hear things. I know. And I just want to make sure that I understand what I'm hearing. So there is a, there's a brand of tobacco called Climax. Correct. And so he, he loves... That was his preferred... That was his preferred thing. So he was... What made him inglorious? Um, well, he was um, a horse thief and a cattle thief, and he stole things all the time, and he was in jail all the time, but he escaped. One time he dug himself out of jail with a spoon, another time he dug himself out of jail with a pocket knife, and sometimes he would just like bamboozle the jailers with like wet clothes and things and escape that way. So Circa what year? This is around um, 1895. But this was a real, this is like a real man. He, he, this is a real character in our history. Now, he's, he's naked in this picture, why? He did escape one time uh, because the jailer wanted him to take a bath. He was very stinky. And so the jailer said, you know, use this horse trough. So um, Climax Jim was ready to go take a bath, but instead of actually taking a bath, he just escaped. Um, with the jailer's horse. And how, so, did, how did you find I, that? <laughs> I did, was assigned this from uh, the Arizona Republic and people from ArtLink, but I do love portraiture, I do. So I wanted to tell his whole story here. I do, uh, so this is a, like a cowboy portrait. I do a lot of self-portraits and portraits of my daughter and you know other people that you mean look, a lot to me. You so. love goggles. Yeah, I do. I I'm painting a lot of swimmers recently. Yeah, what, yeah. what's up with that? What's because water, I believe that being in the water is something that you know is healing. It makes people joyful. So I have a swim series that will be on display at Gamage in Mart in May. Excuse me, and um, it's featuring swimmers. There's yeah. there's there's just some <laughs> incredible pieces. Look at this. Yes. So you have, can you hold that uh, there at the end? Yeah. Perfect. Um, you have a portion of Picasso's Guernica. Yes. Uh, I know these things. Um, <laughs> this is another example. Of Guernica in here, which you've incorporated into this particular painting, which mm -hmm. is called Conflict. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this one. This one, see, this one, yeah, grab me. It, it is a very powerful piece. Um, it is based on um, Theodore Jericho's original painting of the raft here, which he did paint with corpses. He did use corpses to paint his portrait, I mean to paint this uh, paint, painting. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, a, it's a lot about the conflict that happens, you know, in day-to-day -day life. There's uh, Guernica, of course, is about war. Uh, sure. This is a, a combatant here, um, Frida Kahlo. Those are her hearts. Yep. She was always in like con emotional conflict, and I believe that um, it's very important to realize where the conflict lies in in our lives, and to work through that. Art helps us with things like this. How does it help you? 
It helps me because um, as an artist, I'm always, you know, battling my emotions and how to get that out on the canvas. And I believe that it's something that I experience, but it's not unique to me. Everybody goes through this in their lives. Are, so, you, in, are you in conflict yourself? Of course, all the time. Is that why you paint, or, is, or do you paint because you're happy? Oh, I definitely paint because I'm in conflict. I mean, I almost think that if everybody was very happy all the time, we would just, uh, you know, have no need, no angst, nothing to cause us to create things. So, of course, we all strive to be happy, but I do believe that um, striving to make a better world and the conflict that we go through to create that is. Um, allows us to be creative and produce things, so. What conflicts you? Well, a lot of things, you know, um, my success or lack of success as an artist, things like that, or, you know, in the evenings after dinner, should I drink, should I not drink, like what time to wake up in the day, and also, you know, things um, in the news on an everyday light. In, in an everyday light, um, there's a lot of things going on in the world right now. It makes you wonder, why is the world like this? Like, if the, the world is a reflection of um, what is going on interpersonally too. So if we have conflicts between us on an individual basis, those conflicts are also um, exhibited in the, on the world stage on a, in a larger picture. So we have to realize um, what parts of ourselves are ugly, what do we have to resolve. Don't you think though that perhaps you can separate yourself from somebody else's conflict and perhaps deal with your own happiness? Yeah, I mean you can, but you also have to realize that we're all connected too. So um, even though if you know somebody else who's, who's going through some sort of conflict, um, you need to understand that they are like you in a lot of ways too. So nobody is an island. Um, everything, everybody's connected, and that's one of the important things that that we all should know. Do you have um, a special time of the day where you paint? I usually paint in the evenings. I I usually paint you just like all nighters. You know, sometimes yes, and that makes the next day very difficult, but. <laughs> Um, I have woken up early to paint. Um, I don't quite get as much done, and then it makes me late for other appointments I might have <laughs> during the day. But honestly, like any time to paint is really a good time. <laughs> what? Walk me through your your process. Okay. Yes, you are conflicted. You have something that you want to say, and you pick up a piece of canvas and you say it. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that process. I mean, how, how does the image get to the, to the canvas? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it definitely starts in the mind and, and in the heart, just like every day. Like, do living. you see the finished product? Sometimes, yes, I do. But I usually try to kind of write down ideas first and then I'll start with a sketchbook and kind of sketch them out. And, um, from then, uh, it, depending on how excited I am about the sketches, then I could immediately go to a painting or sometimes I just go with larger sketches. But the most satisfying part of painting for me is starting on the canvas and just like taking a blank white canvas and just starting it and just going crazy. Have like, you ever finished um, a painting and you look back at it, I don't know, after a month or two when, when you already sold it perhaps and it's hanging in somebody's living room? And you go, I still wish that I could have finished something else in it. Some, or when you're done, you're done. Some, well, I really generally feel like when I'm done, I'm done. But at the same time, like if I was really wanting to finish something else, I might just do it again. You know, I might just do a new painting of it, the same subject, and then just twist that end part. But at the same time, you have to really let the painting say what the painting is saying. Right? You have, sure. to let the, you have to let the painting be itself, not be totally controlling all the time. Because if, if you become very controlling with the medium, you can flatten it out and uh, negate what you were trying to say in the first place. 
So it is a balance. Rachel, you are phenomenal. I love your art. Where, where are you exhibiting right now? Um, I do have a piece at St. Xavier University okay. in Gilbert, and uh, my next show will be in May at Gamage Auditorium in Tempe. Beautiful thing, May 2016. Yes. This is for posterity. <laughs> yeah. You're amazing. I, I, I love artists. And I love, I love all that you do. This is your self-portrait, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, man is born free, but forever is in chains. Deep. I love artists. With that, we're out.